So I salvaged an old Beesmeyer home shop fence system off of a craftsman that was in a fire. There you can see a before and after shot. Pretty amazing transformation. Let's see how I brought this thing back to life. Okay, so I'm going to try to salvage this old Beesmeyer here. This is actually a home shop uh, Beesmeyer system, so the scale's a little bit smaller, but still a quality Beesmeyer fence. And um, looks like it was in some type of um, maybe fire. Um, some of this plastic looks melted, and the way the paint came off uh, doesn't seem to be just normal wear and tear. So this would be a fun restore project and refurb. Hopefully everything will get working. So the first task was to remove all rust and paint, and my go-to tool for that is an angle grinder with a flexible abrasive pad. I'm really pleased with the way these work. They remove a lot of the rust and paint without digging into the metal. Okay, so all the uh, paint stripped off, all the rust removed, and all the loose paint on these guys. And now we'll... Okay, so we're ready to prime now. The key thing on this... Um, uh, tubing here is to tape off the areas where the fence will ride uh, so you'll get that nice uh, look that the, the fences have nice clean lines there so I got that all taped off and we're good to go so I'm starting with primer here following the instructions on the can and then after the uh, proper dry time then I'll follow back up with um, top coat enamel. I like to use a primer that's as close as possible to my final color so if the, if the final color does scratch off you can't really tell because the primer matches. And now I'm working on cleaning up the laminate faces. First I'm scraping any um, material off and then I, I use some wet sanding to get this grime and ash off of them. This Beesmeyer Home Shop fence system is coming along well. Uh, everything was torn apart and stripped and primed and painted. Now I'm reassembling the fence head here. And so I've got these uh, half inch Baltic ply pieces. Uh, I had taken them all off and uh, sort of resanded and cleaned them up a little bit. Got this side bolted on. And now I'll bolt this side on. I just had marked everything uh, exactly the orientations that they uh, were from and what size they were off. And we'll put this on and then we'll work on uh, some contact cement to get the laminate faces on. And then I purchased some T-molding to run along the edges to uh, clean all that up. So we're, we're getting there, almost there. The rails as well are all done. Rails are installed on the, t on the Delta Unisaw. And then also I've got the uh, front tube all set here ready to go. So we are getting close. So now we're just reattaching the half inch plywood faces and these are just sheet metal screws that screw right into the, um, uh, the uh, tubing, the metal tubing. And if you just make sure that you've labeled left and right, put them on the same way you took them off, you should be fine. And now we're putting on the laminate faces. I put on uh, contact cement and followed the instructions on the can. And then um, I used a, sort of a, a closet rod as a rolling pin. I don't have a J-roller, so this pretty much simulates the same thing. you got to get a lot of pressure to get that contact cement to, to bond. And uh, this uh, did that process for, for both sides. Uh, again, you just brush on a, a coat on both um, mating faces, on the back of the laminate and on the uh, half-inch plywood. And you let it dry for the uh, appropriate amount of time that it says to on the can. And then you uh, mate them together carefully. The main thing is you want to get a good even coat of the um, uh, contact cement on both faces. And then you want to make sure to, to mate them precisely how they were when you took them off uh, so that the edges all line up. You could go back and clean up the edges with a router bit, a flush trim bit, or a, a file, but uh, if you can avoid having to do that, it, it definitely helps. So here I'm going to carefully place this on using my fingers to line up all the edges. And uh, once that's all done, then we'll use the uh, my rolling pin technique here. Again, uh, there's a tool for this called a J-roller. I just don't have one yet, so this is what I'm using. And then once these faces are all attached, then we'll move on to attaching the T-molding. And uh, because I'm reusing these half-inch uh, plywood faces and reusing the laminate and everything, uh, the grooves in the plywood edges are already cut, cut in there. 
And so I'm just uh, cutting uh, the a corner um, uh, relief area out of the uh, T-molding. And then it'll go around the bend just fine. And then following up with a hammer to make sure it's seated fully. And then once I get to the corner, I'll do the same thing. I'll just snip out a little bit of the actual um, part that goes into the groove so that I can go around the corner. And then I'll uh, cut off the end. You can get this T-molding from uh, Amazon and, and eBay and several suppliers. It's just half-inch black T-molding. And now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Uh, just follow the same process and get that T-molding all in there and this fence will be just about ready to go. Alright, so here she is. Came out pretty good. I used contact cement to reattach these laminate faces after I cleaned them up and then obviously repainted everything. Came out pretty good. And now I'm reattaching the front tube, the front rail that the uh, fence slides on here. And these again are just sheet metal screws, much like the uh, bolts that uh, go into the fence head uh, through the half inch plywood that are then covered by the laminate. Same idea here, they're just uh, some threaded holes in this tubing. And I'm just going along and uh, tightening them up. It's a very simple fence design. Uh, when Bill Beesmeyer came up with this, and really revolutionized table saws in a way that uh, nobody foresaw. These are amazing fences, simple design, virtually everybody's copied them now. So there we have it. My recovery is all done. Saved from the fires as it were. Came out real good. We completely stripped and repainted it all. And then we uh, took uh, put some new black tea molding on. We took the faces off and uh, Recontacted, uh, used contact cement to reattach those. Everything's waxed up now and slides really smooth. Good stuff. And so there you have it. Saving a beast mire from the fires. This was off an old craftsman table saw that was in a fire. And we uh, went through the whole process, and here's what we ended up with. A great fence for a great unisaw. One last before and after picture, just to show you the transformation. It's always great to bring something back to life. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope the video has been helpful for you. Feel free to subscribe using the subscribe link. And if you've benefited from the channel and enjoy what you see here, consider donating using the PayPal link that's on my banner picture on my YouTube channel homepage. I put out a video per week. Hope they're helpful. Anything else I can do, contact me. Thanks a lot.